A'udzu billahi minasyaitonir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good uh, day to everyone. Uh, under the subject uh, sciences. Now we move to the next topic yeah. Uh, for this subject which is uh, we want to look into the temperature measurement. Uh, before I go further, uh, so this is our lesson outcome for today. Uh, so I expect you to uh, that all of students can able to discuss and explain the detail and basic element and sensing sensing mechanism uh, for temperature measurement. And then the second one, uh, I expect that after this class, you, you're going to know how to analyze the output signal from any temperature sensor. So this is actually the content for this uh, lecture for today. Uh, I will start with the introduction. I will introduce you about the temperature measurement. And then uh, we're going to look at the uh, definition of the temperature. And then uh, we're going to look into, into the scale and standard for the temperature. And then after that, we're going to look into the uh, available uh, sensors uh, and also its mechanism uh, for the temperature measurement. So we, we have uh, three types of uh, methods that we're going to use for the temperature measurement, which is uh, not electrical, electrical method and radiation method. All right. So now as an introduction, uh, temperature is uh, a variable. It's a variable that we measured. Uh, it can be uh, as a control variable as well. And it used in many, many applications. It's very important in engineering, basically. Uh, we use it for the uh, uh, governing uh, parameter uh, that can govern a few parameters. We're going to have, uh, uh, so, sorry, in the parameters, we, we have a lot of uh, variables, as we mentioned in the, in the, in the previous topic. Uh, parameters is the uh, is the combination of a few vari variables, and for uh, for the uh, for some applications uh, in a parameter, there is a, a variable temperature that very important for that parameter. Uh, for example, in the use for in the um, uh, thermodynamic parameters in uh, uh, and also in heat transfer parameters, uh, when we have a certain uh, thermodynamic and heat transfer parameters that uh, always used in the power plant and gas turbine and so on. You're going to look uh, this one in the uh, topic thermodynamics and heat transfer. Uh, but in those uh, topics, temperature is very important variables. And also, um, uh, temperature is a very important controlled uh, uh, control uh, variables or parameters in some processes. Uh, for example, in aircon, uh, aircon, it's very important for us to, of course, if you want to have a very stable uh, temperature, we're going to control the, uh, the the temperature. And also, in 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 some manufacturing manufacturing pro process, uh, uh, it's very important for us to control the the temperature. We not not to have a very high temperature and not to have a very low temperature. Also in a nuclear reactor, we have to maintain temperature the, because um, in a nuclear, nuclear reactor, it's very important for us to, uh, uh, to make sure that uh, there is a coolant system to cool down the, the, the core reactor. If we didn't uh, properly cool the core temperature, uh, the, the, the core uh, reactor, uh, it will have a risk of explosion. So that's why we need to have uh, uh, some 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 control control uh, mechanism, which is uh, it is uh, temperature uh, as the control uh, parameter or control variables. All right. So next uh, we look at the tem uh, temperature definition. It's actually a degree of hotness or coldness. Uh, some, uh, it it tells us the level of how how hot that body or environment, how cold the body of uh, environment. According to the zero law of thermodynamics, uh, this uh, if we have a if you have two bodies in thermal equilibrium, and then they have another three the third body, uh, they will automatically will uh, in thermal equilibrium. 
whereby uh, the, these three bodies will have a same temperature so that um, uh, in, in other words, there's no heat transfer huh? until no heat transfer. When that bodies uh, close together, come together into a system, it will be it will have a same temperature because of there's no more heat transfer between between all the bodies. At first, you have a movement in terms of energy, and after a few minutes, a few hours maybe, uh, it will have no more uh, heat transfer and it will maintain at one temperature for all the bodies. But that's uh, what uh, Zero's law tells us. And then, uh, of course, uh, if we deal with temperature measurement, we need to have uh, like a standard measurement, uh, sorry, a standard values so that we can use that standard values for uh, for calibration. For example, uh, if we uh, if we look at the um, length, we have one meter length. So what is one meter length? It's actually a measurement of uh, some uh, an, a standard object that have one meter uh, length. So that object is a reference to all measurement. Uh, so one meter of that object, for example, this object is a pen. For example, is a uh, uh, one meter. For example, so this is very st a standard object. So that if you want to find, we want to measure for two meters, three meters, we're going to use this standard of length in to 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 measure uh, two meters, three meters, and four meters, and so on. The same with the temperature. We need to have um, a, a, like a, a standard uh, values that we can uh, uh, reproduce every time. Uh, like 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 the one one meter length. Uh, we can we can fabricate some some reference uh, uh, length. Uh, sorry, uh, 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 some object that can be a standard for measurement. Uh, one meter length, and then that one should be. Uh, Sorry, I didn't have ruler here. So a ruler is one of the uh, reference point, reference object that can be used for the length. But for the temperature, you need to have uh, some uh, standard, uh, some standard or uh, some situation or condition that we can reproduce all the time. For example, we have fixed fixed point according to this table. Uh, for example, we have a triple point of hydrogen. Hydrogen, it can be reproduced uh, by uh, maintaining some pressure and temperature and this triple point of hydrogen always occur at uh, 13.8033 kelvin a very very low temperature or equal to the negative 259.3467 uh, degrees celsius but hydrogen is considered as a very low uh, low temperature but it can be done it can be done uh, we, we can we can produce the triple points of hydrogen. The, the easiest one is we look at the triple point of water. Uh, uh, this one. Eh? Triple point of water. Look at that. Eh? Uh, sorry, this one. Uh, sorry. Uh, so triple point of. Not that one. Can I can I erase? Okay. Okay, triple point of water. So it is about this one. So Kelvin to 73.16 or zero degrees Celsius. So triple point of water is easy to to uh, to create, which which is you just take an ice, take out from the fridge, the freezer, and put in a glass of water. So at that time you will have a three uh, triple point, uh, sorry, three, uh, three phase of water, which is we have a solid phase, uh, liquid phase, and also gas phase. So that one, it will have a temperature of 0 0.01 uh, degrees Celsius or 273.16 Kelvin. Uh, so the same with other uh, three points, for example, three points of oxygen, three points of neon. You can you can use this this kind this solid, sorry this uh, uh, fixed point to be as a calibration point. Lah, huh? It always can be reproduced. It's easy to be reproduced depend on which application that you are looking at. OK, now. So 
sorry uh, so the uh, the scale that we're going to use uh, for the temperature measurement is uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius it is in metric units or in Kelvin uh, Celsius scale is Kelvin in terms of absolute absolute value absolute uh, scale and for the absolute scale for the Fahrenheit is a rank kind uh, rank kind uh, of course in in us in Malaysia I think in uh, Australia uh, in Asia usually we use uh, uh, Celsius uh, a metric unit uh, sorry uh, Celsius as the uh, temperature measurement all right so um, uh, the conversion factors for the uh, uh, measurement uh, for example, to convert between uh, Kelvin to the degree Celsius is written in the slide. I will not go further on this one. Uh, nowadays, we, we just can simply use calculator. They have all the conversion. Also, you can Google uh, easily can convert from um, any uh, scale to another scale. All right. So we're going to now finish with that uh, simple concept of measurement. Uh, now we're going to look at the um, three types of uh, measurement method, uh, not electrical, electrical method and radiations. All right. So the first one is a radiation method. Uh, sorry, for non-electrical uh, method, uh, we we look at two types, two kind of uh, non-electrical method, which is a liquid in glass thermometers and uh, by metallic thermometers. So this kind of method, which is not electrical, we, we, we frequently use, we use this one in the um, area that have risk of explosion. Uh, for example, in, in oil and gas, usually they, they have, they need to have uh, non-explosive uh, uh, sensors, uh, no spark, uh, no creating a spark uh, into the system. So basically electrical sensors, will create a spark and will have a risk of fire and explosion so that's why they come uh, come with, with the non, non electrical method which is uh, very easy for the uh, very very safe huh? for the uh, uh, risk uh, sorry uh, for the area that have a risk of explosion so first we look at the uh, the first uh, sensor which is the liquid in glass thermometer I think this one very uh, everyone know how uh, how the mechanism of this one. So we have uh, we have here is a, a bulb here. So the bulb here uh, have uh, either mercury or any kind of uh, a liquid that can expand uh, with the temperature increase. So it will move in the capillary a capita capillary tube that will show uh, the level of expansion in the capillary to to show the uh, level of coldness uh, sorry hotness in that environment usually it, it will uh, use for the environmental temperature and also it can be used for the uh, liquid temperature just dip the area of the uh, uh, the uh, what we call this a uh, bulb here or the uh, the tank for uh, liquid just uh, sink into any temperature or any gas or any area that we want to measure and then it will show directly show the temperature uh, it depends on the um, uh, the type of uh, liquid that we use uh, some some uh, 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 for example mercury have a freezing points of a negative 37.8 degree c so we we're going to use that one uh, above that level huh? if you use that uh, at the freezing point of mercury we, we can have we don't have an expansion and then uh, for the liquid uh, 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 glass which is a uh, uh, mercury mercury uh, of course it will need to be above than its freezing point which is negative 37.8 until to the uh, the maximum point for the mercury which is can be 340 degree c uh, but if we add more, a few more uh, chemicals inside that mercury, uh, we will have uh, maybe higher value, high, higher uh, uh, range. Yeah? Maybe it can go up to 560 degrees C. Yeah? Okay. 
so the uncertainties uh, for this one is about uh, uh, negative uh, plus minus 0 0.2 degree C or it can also can be a plus minus uh, 2 degree C, uh, the uncertainty for the temperature. It depends on the type of temperature that we want to use, maybe the design, uh, big or small, or uh, using uh, uh, maybe a full mercury, uh, or maybe a combination of uh, additional uh, chemicals inside the mercury so that it can be used for further, maybe it can increase the range for the uh, measurement. But uh, all these things will, uh, will, uh, will come with the uncertainties as well. And then uh, now we move to the next one is, uh, sorry, before I go to the next one, I need to mention about the advantage and the disadvantage about the uh, thermometer. Uh, so the liquid thermometer, it have, uh, uh, it is really low cost. Uh, simple to use, portable, and convenient to, to look at because it have a uh, different colors. Uh. A mercury have a red color, so it can. If we put a mercury inside a, a capillary tube that have a white color, it easy can we can look at the uh, we we easily can see uh, how uh, the the how the mercury move expand inside the capillary. And then the problem is the for this method is actually have uh, limited to certain laboratory only. And because of if we, put, we fill it in the glass uh, co container, it will easily break. Huh? So if it breaks, so you know mercury is very very uh, dangerous. Uh, it's very it's not it's not safe huh? for for children. Okay, basically if if it breaks, then we need to have a uh, hazard uh, hazard control. Huh? If it breaks, uh, and also one more thing, uh, the uh, liquid thermometer, which is mercury, it have a uh, delay time. It's not simply just show the value. It have a uh, lagging eh, time lag before it can reach the uh, the level that can tell us can tell us the the, the 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 reading of the temperature that we want to measure. All right. So uh, then uh, we look at this uh, uh, biometric thermometers which is um, basically two, two uh, materials that paste together. Uh, 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 we bond together so that the first one, the top one, is a high coefficient of thermal expansion and the bottom one have low coefficient of, the, uh, of coefficient. Of course, the, the top one will uh, expand uh, more than the, the the bottom one because of the top one have high expansion rate. So this is how they they they, they both uh, they just put a high expansion on the top and low expansion at the bottom so that you can have a curve. Uh, a curve. Uh, the equation for this how to predict the curvature, the curvature of the uh, bending. Uh, we're gonna look. We, we we need to look this equation. So if we have uh, the D, the total thickness between two those two metals, and then uh, at the early temperature T1, it have a straight line. So at the T2, it will have a curvature. It will have curvature. So the curvature is equal to D, the, the total uh, diameter. Uh, sorry, the uh, thickness, uh, not diameter. The thickness of the uh, both A and B, divided by the uh, the uh, the difference between the thermal expansion and times the difference between uh, two temperatures, uh, temperatures uh, final temperature and early temperature. So that one, this, this, this equation is uh, for the, uh, the system or the bodies that we know the measurement, uh, the values. But for more generalized equations, uh, this one. So it, it tend to have a generalized equation. So in this equation, there's no um, uh, sorry, there's no uh, unknown involved here. Okay, so it totally because uh, it to totally depend on the what kind of value that we want to insert inside this equation to form a correct size of uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, sorry uh, correct size of temp uh, biometric materials. Huh? Uh, so this is actually a very very gen general equation huh? as a guideline for us to design the uh, the biometric materials. 
all right. So uh, biometric function is a uh, have a range of negative 30 to 550 degrees C. Uh, the uncertainties is uh, one only. It have a big range of uncertainties, like we have in the uh, thermometer uh, measurement. It have uh, quite huge uncertainties from either 0 0.2 plus minus up to 2 plus minus uncertainty uncertainties. But for the biometric materials, it have only fixed point plus minus one degree Celsius. Uh, of course, it have when we use the physical body as the temperature sensor. Of course, it have uh, its own limitations. I think uh, uh, for those who are familiar with this one, they they know how to uh, deal with this one to, to to check. The thing is, this is metallic. Yeah, usually they use this one in the uh, control that have a circuit, the uh, join circuit. So if 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 the temperature increase or whatever, uh, it will have a curve and it will uh, disconnect the circuit. So for, for this one, this kind of thing make it very good if you want to build a controller, uh, uh, sorry, temperature control. Uh, for example, in the air con, in the um, in the oven, in the iron, okay, iron uh, refrigerator, okay. Uh, so as an advantage, so it is low cost compared to other uh, type of temperature measurement. Uh, the only thing is uh, it have uh, inability to measure rapid changing. So because of it have, it's actually uh, like a static measure, uh, static temperature measurement. Uh, so if we uh, give the heat, it try it have a slow rate of expansion. Imagine that we have very fast uh, temperature coming in, so that sensor not able to catch up that fast movement of the fast, move, fast movement of the uh, param uh, variables, uh, parameter inside the, uh, the measurement uh, inside the measurement. All right, so that's the advantage and disadvantage of the uh, uh, biometric. And also, if we look at the uh, uh, liquid uh, thermometers, also have advantage and disadvantage so you compare both so then you can have uh, which one uh, appropriate uh, uh, usage for your application okay that one is for non electrical method now we look at the electrical uh, methods there's two common uh, methods for the uh, electrical method which is first is the uh, thermal resistive type it focus on the resistance of the uh, 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 thermo thermo resistance of the sensor, and then the other one is uh, thermoelectric type, which is uh, it more to the self generating uh, voltage or EMF uh, because of uh, because of uh, we have. Sorry, for, for the first one, thermal resistive. If we have voltage, it will create either. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, uh, just confused. For thermal thermal resistive type, with the increase of temperature or decrease of temperature, it will give uh, different readings to the voltage. And if you look at the second one, thermal electric type. With the change of the temperature, basically the increase of temperature. Huh? It will also increase the generations of uh, voltage, the EMF. We call it EMF. Okay. So after this, we're gonna look at the in detail of uh, of this one. Uh, but this is actually a very common uh, methods to be used. Uh, the only thing is we want to make sure that either we secure the sensor with uh, non non sorry. Uh, non-explosive box or uh, uh, spark proof box to make sure that you have uh, no other effect to the system that we want to measure uh, especially in oil, oil and gas they have then we need to pass uh, explosion proof test and also it must have spark free uh, in the system all right so we look at further 
for sorry for the first one uh, under the uh, electrical method which is the thermo type, resistive type so it is based on resistance this one also is divided two parts okay either it the resist uh, sorry other other either uh, temperature increase resistance increase or temperature increase resistance decrease it's either one so we look at the first one eh? uh, the first one is we're going to look is the rtd uh, rtd stand for uh, sorry it will show after this uh, resistance temperature detector rtd so we're going to look this one first and then we're going to go to the second one which is thermistor so for the uh, thermal thermal resistor uh, res thermal thermal resistance detector so it detect the uh, resistance eh? so for rtd uh, it can use this equation okay it, we have uh, looked into the equation in the in the previous uh, topic which is in sensor so r is the resistance equal to the uh, the constant the, the resistive constant times the length and then the uh, uh, divide by the area of the conductor or conductor to see. so uh, rtd have benefit of a very accurate uh, temperature measurement of course register also have a, its own accuracy but uh, we cannot simply just say this one accurate or not we need to look at the specification. If the specification shows it have low, uh, low uh, accuracy, then we can uh, we can say that this is low. Uh, uh, low. Uh, sorry. If, if the accuracy is low from the spec sheet, so we can say it's low. If we have a very high accuracy, so we can say this high accuracy. It depends on the, the spec sheet eh, about the sensors. Uh, for this one, we need to look at the the mechanism, the mechanism how how the resistance can be used as the uh, temperature sensor or measurement. We know that in the previous class, uh, when we increase the uh, temperature, it will increase the resistance as well. Okay, All right. So that's in the previous one. So we're gonna look further this one. So usually, uh, before we go to the uh, mechanism, we can look look at the uh, the type of material that frequently being used for the RTD. We have um, um, uh, the we have the material that have uh, sensitive to resistance, uh, which is uh, platinum, uh, copper, tungsten, nickel. All these things is actually uh, have very high res res resistive. Uh, So the uh, RTD can be used uh, starting from uh, cyrogenic. Yeah? Cyrogenic is the is the temperature, very low temperature. It's a very very low temperature for a body, for a body, for a material. For example, usually uh, below than 150 degrees C or 180 degrees C. It's very low temperature for a body, for a body, and then it can be up to 650 degrees C. Huh? 660, 650 degrees C. As I, you have a very huge range compared to the uh, the previous one we discussed, which is the uh, biometric thermometer or the liquid thermometer. The disadvantage is relatively low sensitivity, relatively uh, high higher cost uh, compared to other, and because of the construction of the RTD. It's easy to get error. Uh, it's easy to get error. Uh, we're going to look at this. What's the basic mechanism, concept, or design for the RTD? Then you then you can understand why it's easy to get error. Honestly, I uh, uh, deal with the uh, swing gauge. Uh, swing gauge have a Wheatstone bridge, which is the RTD also use the same concept. This is makes it have prone to uh, errors uh, during measurement. Uh, so we move to the next slide. So 
usually RTD use platinum because of it, it have a, a temperature resistance, okay? And then stable for a wide range of uh, temperature. It has a resistance to chemical attack and contamination, and it have high accuracy, uh, predictable and reproducible, reproducible uh, changes in electrical signal. Okay, so platinum is common to be used for the RTD. Huh? So if you look at this graph, uh, you look at the relation between the resistance or resist, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the relative resistance. If you look at the, uh, here, R over R, R not, R not is the uh, uh, original, original resistance, R is the resistance after after it increase, uh, the temperature increase. So the relative resistance is it can be related with the temperature, which is uh, the higher the temperature, the higher the re uh, relative uh, resistance. So if you look at the copper and platinum, it has they have re relatively lower uh, relative resistance uh, compared to the a nickel for a same uh, for the same uh, range of measurement but if you look at nickel it have a bumpy it's not linear at particularly particularly it's uh, in the area of 300 to 500 it have a bump so it's showing that uh, non-linear uh, area so that's for nickel if you look at the copper and platinum they are actually very nice very linear uh, just now I mentioned uh, platinum is frequently used. It has a very, very linear uh, curve, very linear line that it can be used uh, for measurement. Accurately can uh, can can show the value for the uh, uh, temperature measurement. Platinum and copper, but copper is up to the uh, maybe about six hundred. But platinum it can give out to 800 uh, degree so we have a large range uh, starting from the cyrogenic until uh, the maximum uh, for copper 600 and for platinum 800 nickel yes it can up to uh, 800 but it have it also have a, a very high uh, slope uh, so that showing that it have a very high relative resistance compared to the temperature but the problem is with nickel is it have a bump so we have uh, uncertainties at about 300 to 400, uh, 500 degrees C. So uh, if you look at uh, table 8.2, uh, there is uh, uh, more temperature coefficients uh, of resistivity for a selected material. Of course, if you look at if you're looking at the the lowest one is uh, I think. Nichrome, eh? Nichrome have a very very low, uh, uh, low temperature changes eh, compared to the uh, resistance, Re resistance, uh, relative resistance change. So the chrome, yeah, it's very very low as well. The platinum considered very uh, very low, but uh, still it always used uh, because of it have acceptable relative resistance. So that one is we discuss if we discuss discuss on the curve, uh, sorry, if the curve uh, in the uh, resistance temperature curve uh, for several materials. So if you look at the uh, body of uh, the RTD, this is what you uh, it look like. We have a uh, copper lead as the input, and we have another terminal. This is just for positive negative. Of course, uh, the the uh the flow of the electrical come in one leg and then get out for the another, another leg but it have a coil inside the uh in, inside the uh ceramic uh sorry ceramic container uh or a uh, metal container it have inside they have a like a uh uh ceramic form or this hollow thing a roll a roll of um uh, resist, resist, resistant element. Eh? So 
the rolling of the resistant elements, it depends with the uh, equation that we have shown just now. On this one, okay, it's totally really this equation, and also uh, we can simply calculate uh, which material is very uh, is useful. Huh? Okay, copper is common, uh, platinum is common. We can we can get it any, anywhere, any of the uh, uh, hardware store. All right. So, like I mentioned just now, uh, we need to use a RTD. We need to use a Wheatstone bridge to measure the resistance. Uh, so I move. Sorry. Uh, so this is actually another example of uh, temperature uh, detector or measurement. And then uh, this is actually a, a, a equation that involved uh, for the RTD. Uh, like I said, RTD is based on the resistance. So it it, ha it always measures the resistance, re uh, resistance and it relates with the uh, voltage. <coughs> so it comes with the original uh, uh, equation is that the polynomial expansion. So uh, but if we can simplify this uh, polyno polynomial expansion, so we get uh, this one. We have this one as a final one. So we have uh, R is the uh, coefficient, uh, sorry, the resistance that we want to measure. R0 is the early uh, or the initial uh, resistance. Uh, of course, this one is the coefficient different material have different option and T is the temperature that we want to uh, measure that we want to see they want they want to that we want to look for and then T not is the original the earlier temperature so so we have uh, this one these two things here have uh, interrelated with, with each other yeah, the rest is just a uh, constant so uh, if you look at this equation the R increase, so T also increase. Okay, so if we increase the T, we automatically increase the value of R resistance. All right. So this is actually uh, what I'm talking about, the Western uh, bridge. Uh, if we look at the uh, strain sensor that I uh, mentioned in the last previous class. Uh, uh, sorry for the uh, for the strain measurement we want to calculate the vg the v the vg value here i can show this here we want to calculate this one uh, from this one we uh, we can uh, convert into a value of uh, strain by using equation I don't want to repeat this one, you just look into the slide. But for this one, the VG is important for us to, to maintain the stability or the, the uh, balance of the circuit. Okay. Uh, we, we use, I will frequently use uh, the word balance because balance is the key for this one, for this uh, measurement of the Wilson Bridge. So we have a R1, R2, and R3 uh, resistance. And then Rx is this Rx, the one that we want to measure. So R1 and R3 is the fixed value of uh, resistance. So R2 is the um, is the uh, variable. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, variable resistance. It, we can adjust the value for the uh, resistance here. We adjust the value here. So. For example, if we have fixed value R1 and R3, and then uh, Rx is something that we want to measure, of course, it's, it's, it's actually uh, it will change uh, depend on the condition. Uh, if the body have increased value of temperature, so Rx also will increase. Okay, so if Rx increase, it will give effect of uh, unbalance to the to the circuit. I will so we will. We will look at this uh, in the next slide. 
Alright. So this is actually the equation. So R1 over R2, okay, the ratio between uh, R1 and R2, R1, and sorry, this one is R2 actually. Sorry, uh, R, R1 and R2, this one, the, this one should be equal to the R3 over R, Rx. So if R1 over R2 is equal to R3 over Rx, that one we call it a balanced circuit. Okay. If you look at this equation here, okay, the equation here. So R1 over R2, R1 is a fixed value. R, does R1, R2 is the variable. We, we, we can vary, we can change the value. R3 is a fixed value. According to this uh, circuit, uh, to this circuit okay so uh, r3 is the fixed value and rx is depend on the temperature that we want to measure so if this rx is increased uh, due to the uh, the increase of the temperature we want, that we want to measure so it will create unbalance to the vg it will when it unbalanced okay it will have a value uh, a value uh, one, two, three, four, five. If this is balance, okay, this this one ratio, this one is equal to ratio this one, both this one, the VG will have zero value, uh, zero value because uh, no no um, uh, electrical, sorry, no current uh, in the system because of resistance uh, balance. So no current uh, working, so there is no voltage, lah. Okay, so. How to make sure it's voltage because the R, R, Rx is increased due to increase of temperature. So to make sure it balanced, we need to increase also the R2. Okay, we increase R2 until the VG is uh, zero. So VG is zero means it uh, have uh, balance. So so R2 we because of we look at VG is zero, then we know the value of R2 lah. Huh? If we know the value of R2 and R1 and Rx is the uh, fixed uh, value, then we can calculate for Rx. We can calculate for Rx. Okay. So the key is we want to try to measure the VG so that it will have a zero value. And then if Z, VG has zero value, then R2 is can be easily. Uh, it shows the value. Huh? It shows the value and then we can calculate for Rx. So look at this one. Look at how the equation is formed. The most important, if we have this circuit, okay, you have to memorize the circuit. So R1, R2. Uh, look at the, the way it, the VG is crossing here, crossing here, okay, R1 here and R2 here, okay. Maybe some people put it R3, put it here, R3 here and R2 here. It doesn't matter. If we change the, uh, the value R2 and R3 here, so for this case, R3 will become the uh, uh, variable resistance huh? and R2 become a fixed point. For example, if you look at this one, oh, sorry, if you look at the next one, okay, if you look at the next one here, look at the circuit here. Uh, so if you sorry, if we, if I can uh, return to the previous one, look at this one. Okay, this is actually a, a input, uh, input fixed point. It's also fixed. Uh. Starting from one one uh, point A until point C, it's a fixed point. Okay, so if you look at uh, this one, so you have the same value. If I can redraw, if I can redraw this one. Okay, so this one is uh, so this one actually a uh, uh, e e lah e so e i okay and then uh, so where's the the g the g crossing from here to here 
in a G. So, so if we uh, look at this now, if I can write down here is the R1. Uh, sorry, this here is the R2 lah. This here is R1. Uh, and here is the. Is it correct? Yeah. So here is the R3. Okay, this is a variable, big variable, and then this one the R uh, X or R R T D. Okay, so if you look at this, uh, if I redraw this this one, so we will see that actually the ratio the ratio between can I change um, R two here and R one the ratio between these two is must be equal. As the ratio of this one and this one, okay. So in lah, huh? so if you look at this one, but so if you look at this that equation, so it's actually a uh, ratio, uh, the ratio between R one and R two equal to R three and R T. I don't wanna if we if I if you put R R two over R one, so it must be equal to the um. R X over R three. So if we change the position up and down, then it we should be accordingly. You change the uh, the, uh, the the value of R lah. Huh? So uh, again, uh, R one over R two is fixed value, and then now uh, R if you uh, change. Uh, if we change the sorry, if R X have a different value, increase value, so we must change the R three so that it will balance and make make sure that G value is zero. Huh? The G value is zero. So whenever G value is zero, that's mean we we stop uh, adjusting the R three, and then now we look at what's the value for R X. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you if I can. Uh, delete this one. Delete again. So, hopefully you understand. Eh? So if you look at this uh, graph here, uh, sorry, if you look at this uh, here, this one, it have R3 and R2 and R1 as the additional uh, wires. Eh? So when have additional wires, of course, it will decrease the resistance. So if we want to if we want to include all these additional wires, so just include uh, in the equation R three uh, plus R one because R three is uh, plus R one here, same circuit as R one. So R R T D R T here plus R R T D, okay, and uh, R two here uh, it actually not involved in the uh, in, in in here because actually it's not according it. It's not connected to any resistance. So R1 and R3 is very important here. Make sure it's included in the equation here. Then we can, we can calculate lah. We can calculate our RTD. So now uh, this is actually uh, how RTD being uh, measured. So we look at the example. So again, if you look at this uh, circuit here. So now try to put a G outside. Yeah. Same if you you can put a, this here inside here. Uh, same lah. <laughs> the, this is try a uh, creative way to to uh, confuse you. <laughs> but the most important is to make a ratio. So we have a fixed uh, voltage here. So now what kind of uh, how can we we make uh, we create an equation? So of course the ratio between these two R one over R three must be equal to the ratio between R to R1 over R RTD or RX eh, or RX. So just just uh, form the equation here. Just form the equation. So look at the uh, information. Information say that the uh, R1, uh, R2 and R3 is fixed value 25 uh, ohm. And then uh, R0 is of course, like I said, is the initial reference value. It's given 25 ohm and the temperature, the early temperature also given. So it's a zero degree. 
just uh, with the uh, so so R1 is the uh, variable 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 uh, th uh, uh, variable uh, uh, res resistance so to make sure that G is uh, zero so we we adjust the R1 adjust and after we adjust and look at the G is zero then it found that the R1 is equal to this one 37.36 so we we know that R2 and R1 R3 is a um, fixed 25 25 ohm and then the R1 is this one and then the fill into equation here okay then that you got R RTD is 37.6 of course uh, it will have the same value lah because of uh, this one R2 and R3 is the same value so just a quick, just a simple, uh, sorry, uh, quick question. How can we want to uh, double the sensitivity of the sensor? The answer is, you, because of this equation, you, you uh, make sure that, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, you put a ratio R2 over R3 uh, double. Uh, for example, R2, sorry. Okay. Um, so uh, we, we let the R2 is 50, R3 is 25. So that if you go here, the ratio is 2 over 1. So of course, with two over one, R one need to be uh, times by two lah, uh, times by two. Then you you can get you, you can have uh, the actually the R R T D is uh, uh, what value? Uh? It's less uh, It's less uh, kan? It's less uh, because of R two R R two is fifty. For example, R two is fifty. And R250 and R3 is 25, so of course this one is uh, two times than RRTD. Okay, so we have to uh, sorry if you move, we have to move uh, variable uh, sorry variable resistance uh, more in order to get a very small change of RRTD. So that's how that's if we put R2 larger than R3. If we put R3 larger than R2. It, we have a uh, different effect. Huh? Uh, all right. So the most important is once you get the RRTD, then you just include into the equation. So this is RRTD. So RRTD here. So R0 is given. Uh, coefficient is given. And then T0 is given. Now we can calculate for the T value. Yeah, we can simply calculate the, the T value will become a 126. Uh, 126. So uh, if I ask you, this is something that you have, you have to think about. The, we know the sensitivity is um, uh, low. In, uh, small input we give very big output. Input small, output big. So for this case, how to make it more sensitive? But, uh, in other words, we want to make sure that small increase of temperature will give big increase increment of uh, resistance because we measure the resistance kan? so how can we we do that how can we how how can we manipulate all this value here to make sure that very small increment of temperature can give very large increment in terms of resistance let's say twice uh, Twice time twice uh twice than uh, this one. Go ahead. I leave it this question to you. Is it actually this is uh, one of the questions that I asked uh in uh, previous uh, test? Huh? Uh, right. Now uh we look at the last one uh example for the uh. Uh, resist resistant type of uh, 
there's a type of uh, temperature sensor, which is the thermistor. Uh, the thermistor is a short form for the thermal resistor. It made of semiconductor, different uh, different than uh, RTD. That RTD is made from the uh, metal, uh, for example, nickel, platinum, and so on. But this one thermistor is uh, uh, is constructed from semiconductor, uh, semiconductor. And then if if we use semiconductor, now we, we, we need to understand that the, the physics of this one. For semiconductor, uh, the, the increase of temperature, it will, uh, it will reduce the resistance. Ah, so you increase the, the temperature, it will reduce the, uh, the uh, resistance. That's how semiconductor works. Nah, uh, in the previous one, uh, we increase the temperature, the resistance will increase. Well, for this one, we increase the temperature, the resistance will be will decrease. Okay, so this is this is different between thermistor and RTD, lah. Huh? Okay. So, further, uh, the coefficient of coefficient of resistance. Sorry, before we go to this uh, this one this point, we go to the first point. Thermistor is extremely sensitive because of the resistance change very rapid with the change of the temperature. Small increment of the temperature, it will uh, it will give. Uh, uh, sorry, it will reduce the resistance a lot. Okay, we reduce the resistance a lot. Uh, it's about ten times, huh? ten times. It's about ten times uh, sensitivity compared to the RTD. Huh? Okay. So, in other words, if we look at, if I can uh, uh, summarize this one. Huh? RTD is small increase in risk, small increase in temp, uh, resistance will give a small also small increase with the temperature. Uh, for thermistor, large decrease in resistance with the increment of the temperature. So it's uh, like uh, opposite uh, between those uh, two things here. All right. So this is the uh, graph. So we look at uh, the axis here. Increase temperature, the the resistance, okay, will drop, uh, will drop, will drop a lot, uh, a lot. This uh, this is it look looks like a uh, linear, but actually if you look at look at the the graph the the scale here, yeah? it's a log logarithmic scale, it's a logarithmic scale. So suppose that you have a very uh uh very uh, sh uh sorry sudden sudden decrease of the temperature. Uh, sorry, sudden decrease of the uh, resistance uh, with the increase of the temperature. All right. And then the, the curve is given by the value of uh, beta, lah, huh? beta, beta in, in terms of uh, Kelvin. Okay. So this is actually the uh, construction of the uh, thermistor. Uh, something like this. It's very small. Uh, I think it's very small. You can. If you look at, if you uh, want to uh, look at the physical of this uh, thermistor, just Google it and you can find a lot of uh, pictures for the thermistor. The same with the RTD. If you want to look what is the RTD, how it looks like, uh, just Google and then it will show you uh, the type, the, 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 the image of the uh, RTD and thermistor. The, th the thing is, for this one, this one is very, it can be very small in size and very can be sometimes can be very extreme extremely uh, small and also it can be a large size lah. of course lah. large size is uh, easy to be done but for the small size of uh, temperature sensor it's not easy eh? but but because of this one is from the uh, semiconductor it can have a very small uh, thermistor lah. Huh? so uh, thermistor 
uh, compared to RTD, thermistor have a better polydynamic range measurement uh, because it has fast response, high sensitivity, and it rugged. Okay. So this is a equation for thermistor. Easy. R is the resistance, the rest, sorry, resistance value that we want look that what we want to look for, and R not is the uh, earlier value, original value of the resistance. So beta is depend on the beta. Okay, this one. Uh, depend on the sorry. Uh, lose uh, the pointer. So the beta is depend on the it's given uh, is it depend on the curve. Uh. Different material have different curve, and then we have this actually the temperature, and this one is the original uh, reference temperature. So of course, uh, the 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 relation that we want to look is the, the how it's R the resistance relate to the uh, temperature here, uh, huh? That's what we want to want to calculate. Uh, if we given all the value, then it's simply we can calculate. Uh. So R value, how can we uh, get the R value? Uh, uh, you can use this uh, a circuit. Huh? You can use this circuit. Um, basically, this is the equation. Huh? This is the equation. Uh, this is, so the RT is the the one that we want to measure. Huh? You find RT. You put into this equation. Put into the equation, and then you simply can calculate the T. Lah. All right. So for this uh, circuit, either you want to use this circuit or this circuit, it's depend, uh, up to you. Both uh, give this uh, value. Lah. So thing if we have R1, R1 is uh, um, uh, for, for example, if you use this circuit, R1 here. And E1 is the one that we uh, is given. Lah. Okay. Uh, EI is fixed value. Okay. Uh, R1. Uh, is the fixed uh, fixed value? Eh? R one is fixed value. We, we can just fix the value for R one. What we do is we put measurement here. Uh, we measure the E I E one E or the voltage along this resistance field. You find the E one, then we put into equation because E E uh, E I is a fixed value. It's a fixed value. You find this one, this one is fixed, huh? given, and you, you measure this one, you can find RT. Lah, huh? RT. So, uh, uh, the E1 is, uh, you can get from a uh, uh, voltage, uh, voltmeter, lah, huh? voltmeter. All right. So, uh, there is uh, another uh, example here. I think uh, this example, uh, I leave it to you to, to, uh, to look at. If you have any question, that let me know about this one. But I will leave it to you to, to look at the example because the the, the calculation is, is just easy, it's straightforward, straightforward example, a uh, straightforward uh, calculation. Just use the uh, most important is just voltmeter to measure uh, the voltage at this R1. R1 is a fixed value. You got E1, you got RT, you put RT into the equation, you get you find T. All right. Uh, so finish with the resistance type of uh, electrical methods. Uh, so we have one more electrical method, which is uh, thermocouple. This is actually not a resistance type uh, method. It's actually a self-generated uh, uh, EMF or, or voltage. So this one we're going to look in the next uh, uh, in the next uh, lecture. Uh, so for now, I stop this one. About one hour we discuss. Uh, I stop this one and then we continue with the next uh, video. So thank you very much. See you in the next video. Assalamualaikum.